my spirit set me free. I think I got the lyrics wrong. Something like that. Um, do -do -do -do. So this is the, I guess this is the Amityville. Yeah, okay, oof, good Lord. <sighs> okay, let's look this up. Let's, let's look at this. The horrific true story of Ronald DeFeo Jr. and the Amityville murders. In November of 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. slayed his entire family and inspire one of the greatest horror stories of all time, the Amityville murders. Ugh, look at that house. Ugh, I just got chills looking at it. Just the mention, oh my gosh. Good God almighty. Guys, what is happening? What is happening just now? Did you see that? I swear, tonight, it's one of those nights where it's like, I feel like I'm... I don't know. Like, that was weird. Like, before I even saw that, I was like, I looked here and I'm like, I got chills down my spine. And like, it says, can send chills down your spine. After all, one of its iconic Dutch colonial houses made times top 10 lists of haunted places, thanks to the notorious Amityville murders. This is almost entirely due to the 1977 book and later movie franchise, The Amityville Horror. Though despite the book's claim that it recalls the true story of the hauntings within its walls, there's evidence that the residents of 112 Ocean Avenue, George and Kathy Lutz, fabricated the story that became an urban legend. What wasn't fabricated, however, were the unimaginable murders that occurred in the home before the Lutz's occupancy. In the early morning hours of November 13, 1974, Six members of the DeFeo family were slain in their beds with a 35 caliber rifle. 23-year-old Ronald Butch DeFeo Jr., the eldest child, confessed to murdering his entire family in cold blood. Dead were parents Louise and Ronald DeFeo Sr. and his siblings, 18-year-old Don, 13-year-old Allison, 12-year-old Mark, and 9-year-old John Matthew. The gruesome Amityville murders were regarded as the catalyst for the spirits haunting 112 Ocean Avenue. However, some argue that the DeFeo family were the, also victims of the house. Oh, wow. God. Mm, Jesus. So did an evil presence already reside at the house before the Amityville mur murders and force a young man to kill his entire family? What we do know is that Ronald DeFeo Jr.'s childhood was monetarily very comfortable, but not content. His father was a domineering and, abu and abusive man, and his mother seemed to fade into the background under his overbearing personality. From that, Ronald DeFeo Jr. grew increasingly troubled into young adulthood. He began to rely on drugs and alcohol to cope. He lashed out physically and even threatened his father with a gun. DeFeo's parents hoped that a weekly stipend and gifts would appease their troublesome son. By age 18, Ronald technically held a job at the family-owned auto dealership, but rarely bothered to show up. So on that day in 1974, it wasn't unusual that DeFeo decided to leave work at noon out of boredom. He met with his friends at a bar, constantly calling his house to no answer and complaining about it to every, anyone who would listen. He eventually left. The next time anyone saw Ronnie, the entire town of Amityville would be changed forever. Oh my gosh. According to the book, American Mass Murders by Valerie Plaza, DeFeo re-entered the bar around 6.30 a.m. yelling, you gotta help me. I think my mother and father are shot. Some patrons followed him back to the house on Ocean Avenue and became witness to the horrifying scene within. All six bodies were found in their beds, positioned on their stomachs. The victims appear to be shot with a high-powered rifle at around 3.15 a.m. However, there were some things that don't quite add up. There were no signs of a struggle present on the bodies or evidence that they were drugged. No neighbors were awake reporting hearing any gunshots, only the DeFeo's family dog barking into the night. Upon a police investigation, DeFeo's alibi of being at work and then the bar began to crumble. As police noted, the family had been dead before 6 a.m. 
DeFeo frantically changed his story as he would several more times throughout the Amityville murders investigation. That sounds familiar. At one point, he claimed that mob hitman Luis Fellini killed his family and made DeFeo watch. But Fellini had a solid out-of-state alibi and soon DeFeo confessed to the police what was assumed to be the truth. He murdered his family by himself. Hmm. DeFeo stood trial on October 14, 1975. His attorney, William Weber, mounted an insanity plea, stating that the defendant heard voices that told him to kill his family. However, the prosecution argued that while the drug abusing DeFeo was indeed troubled, he knew what he was doing when he committed the Amityville murders. A jury convicted him on six counts of second degree murder and sentenced him to six concurrent sentences of 25 years to life. And I'm sorry, I cannot see the chat. I'm not, hopefully, I'm not sure of any. Oh, Ronald with them, I think. In a later ver version of Ronald DeFeo Jr.'s change story, he alleges that his sister Dawn killed their father and then their distraught mother killed all the siblings. Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Like lots. Hmm. In this scenario, DeFeo only killed his mother. Wow. I didn't realize how similar that, but except Chris did that in the beginning. <laughs> then in another telling by DeFeo in 1990, he has Dawn shooting all the DeFeos before he himself kills Dawn. There are yet other theories that place a second shooter in the house. Hmm. Though the stories of the Amityville house being haunted are subject to debate, there is very little doubt that, that Ronald DeFeo Jr. was present for the mass murder of his family in the home. But the question still lingers. Is Amityville House really haunted? Ronald DeFeo Jr.'s attorney, William Weber, was more involved in the lore than you may expect. He claims that George and Kathy Lutz, the home's next occupants for only 28 days, approached him about an idea for a book, he said, I mean, and said, we created this horror story over many bottles of wine. It is a hoax. Um, Weber has since brought a lawsuit against the Lutzes for taking the story of the haunting to another publishing partner. He demanded a share of the profits of a cool 60 million. Oh, that's exploitation. Eventually they settled out of court for 2,500 plus 15,000 for his services connected with the book, 60 million, good God, and subsequent movie. Whether you choose to believe the Amityville house is haunted or not, some interesting information is still out there. One of their sons, Daniel Lutz's claims, Daniel Lutz claims that he was possessed by a spirit, much like Reagan McNeil and the exorcist. Their other son, Christopher, vehemently insists he did have run-ins with the paranormal, including the time he saw a presence as definite as a shadow in the shape of a man that moved toward him and then dissipated. Interestingly enough, both George and Kathy Lutz took a lie detector test about their story and passed. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Hello, Phoebe. Hold on. Well, it's just one of those things. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so anyways, that was interesting. I didn't really, I've never really, I know about it, but I didn't know like the specifics about this case, about the Amityville. Um, you know, yeah, exactly. Isn't that funny, Brandy? It's like, um, yeah, John Benet, Ramsey, good, good. Um, yeah, I wonder, yeah, that one, um, I'll look at that in a minute. But yeah, isn't that funny, Brandy? It's like, we all know about that, right? We've all heard of the Amityville um, horror story, um, but I didn't really know the details like that. So that's interesting. Very interesting. So oh, I have yet to find a YouTuber who reports on the Watts case who does not criticize others. 